So I have had a lot of questions from you guys asking me what soil is the best for Venus flytraps. And generally people ask me one of two things. Either they ask me is peat and perlite better for the carnivorous plants or is it sphagnum moss and perlite? Which one is better? And so in this video I'm actually going to be repotting this plant, dividing it up and potting some of them into peat, some of them into the moss and we will find out together which one is actually better for your plants. So let's start the video. So over here I have uh, I don't know seven little pots that we are actually going to be putting some of these small Venus flytraps into. What we will do is that we will put the Venus flytraps, the small ones, into the small pots with the mixture that we've made which is the sphagnum moss and perlite. Um, it's a ratio of one is to one and you mix it together and in this big pot we will keep the biggest mother plant from this pot and we will keep it in perlite and peat. The reason why I want most of them in the small pots is because we actually did a video last week on repotting the Venus flytraps and they're all in small pots in peat and perlite already. So if we have small ones in peat and perlite and small ones in moss and perlite, we will have a better, more accurate, um, you know, comparison between the two. And yeah, I prefer peat and perlite for Venus flytraps. If you ask me right now, what should you grow your Venus flytraps in? I will always tell you peat and perlite. It's sphagnum peat, not cocoa peat. That's in perlite, same thing, ratios, one is to one by volume. Mix it together, put your plants in. That is what I'll recommend for your Venus flower traps. But yeah, so you guys have been telling me that the sphagnum moss helps the plants grow faster and bigger. Um, that is probably the only positive that can come from growing the sphagnum moss. The rest of the stuff about them is that Sphagnum moss is difficult to find, it is expensive as well. And it's difficult on the plant's roots if you repot them. It also holds a lot more water than peat, so your plants are more likely to rot away and die. So you have to be very careful if you're growing your Venus flower traps in the moss. But I am going to do this experiment with you guys to see if the perlite is better or the peat is better than the moss. And hopefully we actually get some plants that can grow pretty quickly out of it. I don't think we will, but I'll try it anyway. And then we might end up with a video, you know, saying how to save your Venus flower trap again. So let's start off with this. We are going to unpot this plant, divide it up a little bit, and then I will show you what to do with all the babies, and then we'll pot them up into their own pots. So I don't know why people are so persistent when they say that they want to grow their plants in this, in the moss and perlite. I have absolutely no clue why. Like I said, it is more expensive. It's difficult to find. It destroys the natural, you know, bogs that, that they come in and whatever. Like, it just doesn't make much sense to me. The only reason why I can think that people want to use it is because either they've been given the wrong information or they think they have to grow their plants in it because in the wild, some Venus flower traps are found inside of the moss. I don't understand any other reason why someone would actively want to grow their plants in there unless they truly think that it helps their plants out. Um, you know, I've never grown them in the moss before because I just, I can just tell that the plants don't like it from my experiences at least, but some people are really adamant about it. So <laughs> let's give it a shot. So once again, just to get the plants out, squeeze the side of the pots, both sides, turn it upside down, give it a little shake and everything will fall out nicely. See? Let's see what we've got. Some very healthy roots. The white tips of the roots sticking out it means the plants are very healthy. And here is the rhizome. Very big white rhizome, very healthy plants. And if you guys are dividing plants for the first time and you can see there's multiple plants, the divisions are easy, like I've done before in the last videos, just pull them apart. Now we've got two little plants there, and there's probably like another two there two or three. I'll show you that again. Very, very easy. 
You take the one plant, or you see you can't even hold it. <laughs> they were together, you just grab the one, you pull it off. Very simple. Very, very easy to do as well. So there we've got one plant. Hang it on the side. Actually, let me show you guys. I just hang them over the sides like that. Doesn't matter what you do really. So that's one plant done. Taking off all the dead growth of this one. Don't want that. So this is this is a dead old Venus fly trap that it used to grow from. Don't want that in your soil. And there we go, there's the second one. Remember to keep the roots safe. You don't want to pull all their roots out. If you pull some out, it's fine. But don't pull all of their roots out, your plant, you know, will die. Just be careful. And let's see here, there's a couple more plants, but uh, I don't want more leaf pullings, guys. We've done so many leaf pullings last time. Okay, well, we divided that one. That was a division, rhizom division. I've done a video on this, guys. That's why I'm not going too deep into it. But there's a rhizom division. It has a root, so this one will be fine. We mistakenly did a leaf pulling again. And there's one more plant in here. Two more, actually. There's one here, one here, and one here that we just divided off of there now. So this is actually another big leaf pulling. So... And there's actually a new crown developing inside of here. You guys can see that little tiny one? That's a new plant actually developing. Let's look around the back, see if we can figure out anything here. More leaf pullings, guys. I hate leaf pullings. Anyway, I am not going to divide this one up anymore. There is a plant here. And I think we just pulled out the other one by mistake. This will be the mother plant. Those ones will all go into their own sphagnum, moss and perlite pots. And then we can actually see what happens. So if you guys are interested to see the results of these plants, to see, you know, if peat is actually better than the moss or if the moss is better than the peat, make sure to actually subscribe to the channel so that you can obviously get your updates from the channel so you can see the videos when they come out because it does take a long time for you to see results with carnivorous plants. If you've been growing them, you'll know this. They take at least six months for something interesting to happen. So yeah, let's get everything else ready. So we'll just do the adult plant first. I'll just describe to you the process. You're gonna fill up the bottom layer of your pot. Make sure that this bottom layer is very tightly packed down so that it has good contact with the water in these holes here at the bottom, because that's what you want your plant to be sitting in the right water all the time in the full sunlight don't know how many times i've told you guys the same thing <sighs> and you still get people asking why the plant is dying <laughs> to watch the videos man your soil should be wet i obviously did not wet my soil and i only realized right now that it's not wet but it will be fine because this soil has been wet in the past so you don't have that hydrophobic action like you usually do. So what I like to do, I like to fill up one half and then the other half of the pot, just like this. Put the plants in, the correct level that you want is where the white turns to green. That is where your soil level has to be, just like that. You fill up the rest of this corner and tuck it in nicely. And there we go. This is going to be our mother plant that is in peat and perlite. Now we have three, four pots we need to do in the sphagnum moss and perlite. So let's get that real quick. So we have a very interesting comparison here. Obviously we have these small plants that are gonna be in the, these pots, but we also have leaf pullings that are gonna be in this new soil as well. In the last video, I put leaf pullings into peat and perlite. So now we also have a comparison of leaf pullings in moss and perlite. So this will really be a good indication if the moss is actually better for roots growth as well. So I'm actually pretty excited to see the results of this guys. And I hope that you guys are enjoying this process with me. If you are, please remember to leave a like. It does help the channel out more than you think. Now this, okay, this is a very important process. 
Most people will just do this. Here's the moss, put the plants in. They go like this. Put the plants in. Put some moss on top. Okay, there, the plant is potted up. Your plant is going to die within a week. Do not do this, okay? That is how to kill your plant in sphagnum moss. And this is why most people who use sphagnum moss end up with dead plants, because you're not doing it right. Okay, let's show you how to do it properly. Okay, so you can either use your moss with the perlites or just normal moss. I'm gonna use normal moss because I don't like perlite floating around in my table because the perlite will fall through the holes. What you do, you get some moss, obviously depending on the size of your pot. This is a very small pot. Get your moss and you lay it flat onto the bottom of your pot and you pack it down pretty well, obviously, so that it can make good contact with the soil, with the water underneath, okay? That's your first step. Now, let me show you something about moss. Can you guys see this? This moss is moss. It is long, like moss. There are long strands. You cannot pot moss into a pot like this, okay? You need to layer it. It has to be laid down flat on the soil, okay? You see how I kind of rolled it up? I let it spiral down so that it is flat. So you have to ensure that your moss, if you're using sphagnum moss for any one of your carnivorous plants, has to be layered like this. You can't just shove it in. It has to be in layers, guys. This is the most important aspect of using sphagnum moss. Unless you go and chop it up finely or get mulled sphagnum moss, you have to lay it like that. See, I'll show you again. Okay, I'm laying it down. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying here. It's very important. If you don't do this and pack it down gently, you end up with cavities inside of the pots, air cavities, roots can't grow in there. There's no media there. Soil doesn't get watered properly, the plant dries out and dies, even though the soil may be wet. It is a very difficult process, and this is the biggest thing that people struggle with if they're using sphagnum moss for their plants, I think. So I'm just going to continue putting this first pot up the same way, and I'll bring you guys back when I'm done. Okay, so you guys can't really tell from the video, but I can promise you right now, potting with this moss takes longer as well than using peat. That is another caveat with using moss. It takes so long. Obviously it's expensive and because you have to layer it properly, it takes longer. So the only positive so far from using this soil recipe is that we hope that the plants grow quicker and bigger. That is the only thing that we can hope for right now. But let me show you how to plant up your Venus flytrap in the soil. Kind of make a divot Get the longest bit of the roots in there, cover it back up a little bit. And now, unlike the peach, you can't really make corners because you know you have to layer the moss. So now you're just gonna have to layer the moss on top of it, on top of the roots on one side. Make sure that you have more than enough to, there on the side of the pot. Bring the plant across. So you can expose the other side of the plant. And now fill up this new cavity that you just created over here. And there we have our first ever Venus flytrap in sphagnum moss and perlite. I do not recommend this, at least for now. But let's see how it goes, guys. Hope the plant doesn't die but you can see it's quite spongy. There's lots of gaps on the top of the pot. So I'm gonna fill this up, plant up the other plants, and then I'll bring you guys back. And now we will put in our leaf mistaken pullings. Now it's a little bit different because this doesn't have any roots, but you just wanna make a little hole, put the plant in, obviously, and then cover up that little stub that you just created, or that you just put into the soil. Fill up the hole. And same for a normal pulling like this. 
make a little little gap if you can. Sometimes these are easier, you can just push them in, but not, not in this case. Put in the pulling, cover it up nicely, make sure that there's good contact with the soil for both of your pullings. And then obviously fill up the rest of the pot if you're pedantic about it like I am. And that's how you do the pullings. Very, very simple, just like I explained in our last video. But now I've shown you guys how to do divisions in the wrong, in my mind, the wrong soil mixture. And we will actually discover which soil mixture is better or worse for these plants. So I hope that it's better, guys. I mean, I don't want my plants to die and I'm sure you don't want yours to die either. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel to find the last end results of this. I'm gonna put this one aside, finish off the last little Venus flytrap that we have pulled apart, that we have divided up together. And then I'll bring you guys back. See you then. All right, guys, so there we have it. Our Venus flytraps are now potted up in sphagnum moss and perlite because you guys um, always ask me what is the best soil. So now we're going to find out together. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, I always recommend peat and perlite. I've said this so many times now, but if you are still unsure, get peat and get perlite and use that. Don't use the moss, not yet at least, not until we can discover for ourselves what is better. Um, I do hope that the plants survive, obviously, because, you know, we all care about our plants, don't we? But yeah, I'm hopeful for this. I was really looking, um, I was really looking forward to this video to see, you know, if this does actually help our plants out or not. And I think you guys will find this video pretty interesting as well. So yeah, too bad that the plants take so long to grow. But in a couple months time, we will find out if these plants have grown any quicker than the ones that we've already done. And our two leaf pillings over here, we can compare them to the ones that are in peat and perlite. So I'm going to put these guys outside and move them all out there, pack everything up, and I'll show you them on the water table. Okay, guys, so here we are back outside. Here is the plant that we just potted up together. Here is last week's division. Here are some of the plants that we did last week. As you can tell they are still fine they're doing well just show you guys the rest of the collection our saracenias are starting to grow again now making new growth which is very very good i'm excited to get some saracenias out here check that it's a flower anyway our plants are all coming out of dormancy some drosera bonata Drosera filiformis back there, out of dormancies. Our tuberous drosteras here are starting to go dormant. See that some of them are going black there. Here's our dewy pines. Everyone's looking happy. Here are some Drosera alicias that I have for sale. If you want some and you live in Australia, please buy some off of me instead of someone else. <laughs> These are some Drosera natal lenses as well. And here are the Drosera, I mean, the Venus flat traps that we did last week. They are all doing just fine. Here's the divisions. They're going black, which is normal. The leaf on the surface will go black and die off. But hopefully, if you pull enough rhizome off, it will start making new babies underneath. And here are today's ones, literally right next to each other. Here's the leaf pullings, next to the leaf pullings. So we will see the end results of this very, very soon, guys. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that video. I hope that it's interesting for you and I hope that you guys are also just, ex just as excited about the outcome of this experiment as I am. So once again, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.